OC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from the company Azul. And this is the Azul Elite Bare Bones Mini PC. This is a small little mini PC that is a little bit more powerful than your typical mini PC that you might find online. Uh, it's definitely competing with the likes of things you'll find from companies like Intel or Asus or some of these other brands that have some pretty cool mini PC designs. And it's a step up from their previous flagship uh, that we had covered recently in the Byte series, uh, which proved to be an amazing mini PC uh, that was, uh, well, actually put to the test quite a few times on our end as we used it side by side with some of the others that have came in. And I believe it's even being used right now for something. But the options are endless in terms of what you can use these for because they're just meant to maintain a small footprint while providing enough power to do a lot of things. And this one gives you even more power because this one now has the 13th gen Intel processor, the Raptor Lake series, and you can have it and you can find it in three different formats. You have i3, i5, or i7, and all three of those are, well, just going to depend on what you need out of the mini PC, but all three of those should provide you more than enough power to be able to accomplish just about anything. When it comes to things that you'd normally make use of these for, let's say signage in the commercial world or a point of sale system, a kiosk system, a workstation, a small workstation for somebody to work from, or what the company likes to brag about is IoT because there's so many implementations that this can be used for in the world of IoT. Let it be running a home assistant server to manage your house or small business with, or maybe setting it up for a, you know, putting Linux on there with Docker and running a bunch of different options like Pi-hole, uh, for example, or PFSense. If you want to do a homemade router and firewall solution, all of that can be done using a mini PC like this one, especially since this one has dual ethernet ports. And of course, since it is one of their flagship options, it does support NVMe for storage inside and DDR4 for nice, quick, speedy RAM. And the multiple options that you have to choose from aren't limited to just the processor alone. Again, this is a bare bones mini PC, so you do have to put some work into it yourself to get things going. Uh, but you have that option to start as bare as possible to is pretty much having everything that you can need to just plug it in and start going, really. Uh, but it, it starts off with just a bare bones with no RAM, no hard drive, no operating system, just the processor and the computer. Then you can move your way up from there. You have options like eight gigabytes of RAM packaged together with 128 gigs worth of NVMe hard drive space, or you can do 16 gigs of, of DDR4 RAM with a terabyte NVMe inside. You also have the option of choosing to have no operating system installed on the drive if you choose to have a drive come with it, or you can have Windows 11 Pro. And if that's not what you're looking for, you would go with no OS and just install the OS of your choice. Let it be Linux or something else that you find necessary for whatever project you're using this for. So the processor is configurable, the option of a hard drive is configurable, and the option of RAM, DDR4 RAM memory, is also optionable in terms of what you want or don't want, except for the processor. You have to choose a processor. Beyond that, what comes standard with the Elite series is going to be Bluetooth support, Wi-Fi 6 support, as well as that before mentioned dual Ethernet feature, which is definitely something that can come handy if you're looking to, say, again, use PFSense or something else on this to create your own firewall or router solution. You have two ports. There's definitely a lot of configurations you can make use of. And you have on this model three HDMI ports, giving you plenty of options for display outputs. So you can run up to three monitors with this little mini PC, and it does handle a resolution of up to 4K at 60 frames per second. You also get two USB 3.1 ports as well as two USB 2.0 ports. That way you're covered for both data transfer between external devices like NVMEs or spinning hard drives, as well as ports for your accessories like a mouse and a keyboard. And since you have such a huge range of options in terms of processor, RAM, the hard drive inside, and if you're getting an operating system of Windows 11 Pro or not, 
you also have a huge price range in terms of where you're gonna fall into. And it's gonna be anywhere between $520 and $1,045.99. So there's definitely a lot of wiggle room in there in terms of price versus what you get as you build it to whatever your needs are. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna open this up, we're gonna take a look at this mini PC, see what it looks like, what it comes with, and then later on we're gonna have a full story about this at plcnetwork.net where we're gonna let you know what we think about it once we've put it through its tests. And the first thing, it's just straight to the point, you have your accessories here and you have your mini PC. We're gonna open up the accessories and within those accessories you have your power brick comes in two parts here. You have your power brick that goes to the mini PC, and then you have the IEC cable that goes from the brick to your wall. And then you have your dual antennas for the back of the mini PC for your Wi-Fi, as well as a few little accessories here, including some screws, some extra screws. You have an auto run jumper, as well as some thermal tape here to help spread the heat away from the NVMe inside or what may be in, inside if you Add that later and transfer it to the rest of the case so it could cool. And then you have the mini PC. So the mini PC, again, you're gonna put those uh, antennas on. This is gonna be for your Wi-Fi 6, two by two. And it really looks a lot like the previous model that we had covered from this company, only obviously this is gonna be a little bit more powerful. It's got that 13th gen Intel processor, that, that Raptor Lake processor inside. But this is also really focused on, on your connected displays more than anything else uh, because of that whole three HDMI port thing you got going on on the back side here. So this is really focusing on display technologies like again kiosks, signage, point of cells, interactive things at convention spaces, or anything else you'd need to use it for. Again, it's got those dual ports, so you can also use it for things like PFSense and other home projects, or for the small business that you might need dual ethernet for. Now, something to keep in mind, if that's all you're using it for and you're not using it for multiple displays, you're just using it for one display, the previous model that we had covered might be something that's more for you. This is gonna be for somebody who needs a little bit more umph in their step when they're, uh, deploying this into its operation. Now, uh, uh, on the back, you have those dual ethernets. You have the three HDMIs. You also have a lock hole here. This is gonna be for your typical Kensing Kensington style lock. Now it just slides in there and it keeps this from going anywhere in case this isn't a public area. Nobody can just run off with it. And then you have your power connection here and that's where the brick's gonna plug into. On the one side over here, if you're looking from the front, it's left side, just has some ventilation so it can have some hot air escape out the side. The opposite side from there, it's right side. You have those four USB ports, which are gonna be the one, yeah, the two USB 3.1s are here, and then you got your two 2.0s here. And then you also have a USB type C port on the side as well, including a mini or a micro SD card slot uh, that's right here inside. So you also have the option of micro SD in case you wanna expand your capacity with simple things and or just transferring images and files back and forth quickly. You have that option. If not, you can also do a thumb drive. On the front side of the unit, you have just your power button that turns it on and off. So again, it looks a lot like the previous model we covered, but we'll just go ahead and take a look on the inside, which only requires removing the feet. The feet are also screws. So you just take those screws out. And now that we got those screws removed, we're just gonna pop that bottom plate out. And it is attached by a ribbon because you have your, your blower fan here that keeps it cool. Uh, if you need to move this off to the side as you're working on that, you can always just remove this uh, connection right here and that just pops right out of there and you can set that off to the side. So you have a nice thin low profile blower fan here with a lot of blades so it's going to move a lot of air there and then you have instant access to everything inside. So you have a copper heat sink here that moves all the heat away from the processor up to here and then out. Now the fan, that's really cool. It's conveniently placed right there. So it's also blowing on that and out the air ducts or the vents, at least the air ducts, the vents in the back of the PC. So it's collecting that heat as it's pushing everything through and giving you an efficient cooling system for the processor and everything else. Now I'd mentioned you have that 
thermal tape here or that pad uh, for the NVMe. Now, if uh, I'm assuming if you choose a model that doesn't have one, they may or may not provide that. Hopefully they do at least with one. In this case, uh, they did provide a hard drive. So we have one that's already applied to it. So this really just ends up being a backup in case something happens to this. And of course the drive is right underneath that thermal pad. In this case, it is a Kensington NVMe. And like I mentioned, uh, 128 gigabytes. And then you have your DDR4 memory right here with two different slots that you can make use of. So we have one stick here and you can upgrade by using both of these slots. And again, I believe the max is 32 gigs on this model. So you have expandability right here. You can upgrade the hard drive if you ever choose to. So you can make changes to anything you need in here. You also have, which is nice that Azul does, you also have a serial ATA connection right here. So that way you can add a 2.5 inch SSD in here as well if you need additional capacity. And then to put everything back together again, you simply just pop that plug back into place, apply the base back to the bottom of the mini PC and screw in these little feet, which again are the screws to keep it shut. Now, of course, if you choose to mount this instead of just sitting it on a flat surface, it does have four mounting holes here across the back. Now, Zool does have mounting accessories that you can look into, or maybe you can just 3D print your own or buy something online. Uh, they do not provide one with this model, uh, but there are options out there to mount this to a back of a TV or something, so that way it's out of the way in case you're using this for signage or something else where the PC doesn't need to be in plain sight. But that's it. It's a powerful mini PC. Again, three processor options, upgradable memory, upgradable hard drive space via NVMe or optional SATA as well as for a 2.5 inch hard drive thrown into the mix. And then of course you have external drive support for USB or you can use SD cards for moving files back and forth between the PC and something else. Again, those dual ethernet ports are awesome and it gives you a lot of options in terms of what this can be used for and those three displays giving you plenty of output for this say you're in an expo somewhere and you just want to run three separate monitors using this you can there's just a lot of potential for this and it's easy to work on because that bottom plate comes off so easily just by removing those four screwed in feet and that's it. So again, we're gonna have a full story about this later on at pocnetwork.net, where we're gonna let you know what we think about this once we've run it through some tests to see what we feel compared to, let's say, the last generation that we came across from Azul and some of the other mini PCs that are out there in the market today. So check that out at pocnetwork.net once that story posts. And as always, if you liked what you've seen here, don't forget to subscribe below, click that subscription button and follow us as well as the like button to let us know you like this video and definitely make use of the comment section as well in case you have any thoughts comments suggestions or anything else for us each other or the manufacturer if they are watching and as always we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time if you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover remember to subscribe right here subscription button click it you're going to want to there's lots of videos interviews previews all sorts of stuff button. Click it.